Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, it's how to make a 2D clicker game in Unity and welcome to episode 4. So this time we're going to look at some if statements as well as a status box down the bottom. So we're going to create the status box so we can have text in there which says for example, oh not enough cookies to sell. And then obviously we're going to make this uh, if statement kind of work to say yeah, if there's not enough cookies then don't sell them. So let's start by going to game object go into UI and let's add in a panel. Now it'll cover this entirety of the screen, but we can always use this tool right here and select the blue dots and kind of decrease it to fit how we would want it on our screen. So I'm gonna bring it to about here, drag it across so as it kind of fits quite nicely, that should do. And then obviously like with the buttons, we can change the color. So we can have it red, we can have it black, and by default the alpha is set to 100. So if you have full alpha, then you can't see through. If you have zero alpha, then obviously you can see through. So I'm going to set it to probably about 125, I think. So let's right click and rename, and let's call this status box. And the next thing I'm going to do is add in some text which will fit nicely in the status box and kind of, I want to animate it as well just to show what's happening here. So we'll go with game object, UI, and we'll go text. Let's bring this text down here to about there. And I want to anchor it to uh, bottom left. So this will make it kind of stick to this position at all times. Let's stretch it across so as it fills at least most of this box. And I want to leave it blank by default. Uh, in fact, before we do that, let's actually change the font. Uh, I want to change it to white. And uh, it's font size, let's have a nice kind of, about 30 may do. Let's see what 30 looks like. Yep, that'll do. Should we add it bold as well? Let's have it bold as well. So it's up to you what you want the style to look like. Uh, take a bit of time, get it just right. And next thing we need to do is let's animate it. So the animation component within Unity is quite handy because it can create simple little animations which do look quite intricate. So in the assets folder, right click, create folder and call it animations. Now here I have the animation tab. If you don't have that available, all you need to do is click this little button here, the arrows in the line, go to add tab and click on animation and it'll bring this right here. So to make this useful, let's go into our animations folder, click on the text right there, which we'll right click and rename as status text and click on animation tab and then click on create. And what we'll do is we will just call this something that we can remember quite easily. Status anim, short for animation. And we're going to let this run for about, a, we're going to animate it for about a second or so. And what we need to do firstly is click on the record button right there. And you'll notice this turns red. And we're running in 60 frames a second as dictated here in samples and zero is the very first keyframe. So for zero as the keyframe, what we need to do is make sure the Y position is something decent. So let's set it as, let's have it whole number. So let's try 75. And uh, the alpha, which we are going to change in this as well. Let's make sure that that is set to 255. So to do that, make sure we click on color here click on alpha and type in 255, hit enter, and then press the X. So over the course of, let's say a second, as I said, we want to make this kind of move downwards and fade away. And we can do that by doing the end frame. The animation worked everything out in the middle, which is quite easy and quite handy for us as developers. So let's go to the 60th frame, hit enter, so what we're doing now is by the 60th frame, this is what we want it to look like. And we want it to be, let's say, further down here. So about there. And we also want it to be 
completely transparent so we can't actually see it. So now when we've done that press the record button go back to project and press play and we'll see this in action. So you can see that's how this is going to work. So this particular status text is going to say different things at different times. So I'm going to leave it as new text for now because we're going to reference it later on when we try and sell the cookie or rather sell the cookie. So we've got this all in order now. What we need to do is remove animator because I want to be able to control the animation. Now, although it may seem illogical to remove animator, we actually want to use something if we click our component called animation and we can get that just by typing anim at the top and clicking on animation. It's the same sort of thing, but I feel it gives a bit more control with our animations. So I'm going to untick play automatically and I'm going to drag and drop status anim into here, the first box. And if we click the arrow in animations, change it to one, hit enter and then drag that animation. So we can have quite a number of animations going through here. So we can create different ones if we want to. And this animation at the top is the one that is done by default. Now, the final thing we have to do here is set this animation as legacy. To do that, we click on the animation, go over here to the inspector panel. And at the very top, we have this little icon again, like we did down here. And we click it and click on debug. This then gives us the option to change to legacy. So just take that and head back to normal and wrap mode. We need to set as once. Now, when we press play, we don't have that animation happening. It just kind of stays still. So to get that all working correctly, let's go to our sell cookie script. So let's just make sure we do get the right script here. And we can do that by clicking on the button and over here, button object which is this one, it highlights yellow, very handy. And here we have cell cookie. So double click and we'll open it up in Visual Studio. So what do we have to do here? If you remember, we set this here text box because we wanted to display the cookies. Now, if I recall correctly, if we press play, we can click cell cookies and it does show. So we need to use some if statements here. Now, when we click the button, let's start by going if open brackets global cookies dot cookie count is equal to zero, i.e. we have none. Then we do the following so open curly bracket so if it's equal to zero what we need to do is change the text in this text box right here to say not enough cookies to sell so in fact before we do that there's one thing we've forgotten we need to declare it in our namespace so at the top before we go any further underneath using unity engine type using unity engine dot ui semicolon all this does is allows us to use things like text elements of the get component feature and rather than a script trying to figure out what it's doing if we declare it in the namespace at the top it makes the script run well i say quicker but it makes it realize what's going on from a technical point of view so now we need to declare the actual status box so public game object status box semicolon so then if it's equal to zero status box dot get component and in spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals and we'll say not enough cookies to sell and a semicolon once it's done that we can then play the animation that we've just created so once again status box dot get component 
in spiky brackets, animation, open close bracket, dot play. And remember that's a capital P. And then in brackets and quotes, we put the name of the animation we just created. In this case, status anim. There we go. Close quote, close uh, bracket, semicolon. Now, at this point, even if we have zero, it will still try and take one from us and still add to our cache. So we have to do something called an else statement. And what this means is that if this is true, which it is, it will run this. If it isn't true, then it will run something else. So we can just do that by going else, open curly bracket, get rid of the automatic close one that it's given, go down below and close curly bracket and it will auto indent, which kind of makes it look easier to read. So if we save that script now, head back to Unity, and it's had a quick think and there's no errors. The status box becomes this status text here, which is the text itself. So button object, drag and drop that status text onto there. And if we press play now, we should be able to see, yep, we can make cookie, no problem. We can sell cookie, no problem. But one thing I might do before we do anything else is let's actually get rid of that text on there because we don't want to see new text in our status box. So let's try one more time. So we can make cookies, can sell cookies, and now let's try and sell a cookie even though we have none. Not enough cookies to sell. Perfect. So you can go the whole hog and you can change things. You can give it different animation styles. It's entirely up to you how you want to tackle this problem. But if statements are going to become very, very useful for us as we go further into development on this, because they give us the option to kind of say, if this is true and this is true, then we can do this. If not, then we can do something else. Uh, so uh, we're getting into a bit of logic here. And I think this is where we're going to go going forward because I quite like how this is going. Well, what I think I'm going to do, it's actually bugging me. I'm going to change that to say cell with two L's, not three. Okay, so I'm going to save my project right there. Now, next episode, I'd like to add in an actual cookie for this button so we can use imagery for the buttons themselves. Uh, it was a request by someone on a recent live stream. So I figured, why not? Let's put that in there and have a look, have some fun. And we'll start looking at extra functions such as auto create. So when we have enough money, we can buy, let's say, a cookie maker and it'll automatically make ourselves cookies every so many seconds. So again, that's where logic gates start coming in and if statements become quite prominent in development. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.